and welcome to the final presentation of group 29 on analysis in an infant incubator. So an incubator is basically a fixture to ensure that the babies needing extra support have the best possible environment and continual monitoring. It is like a second womb that is designed to protect the baby and provide the optimal conditions for their development. It is designed to provide a safe, controlled space for infants that is protection from allergens, germs, excessive noises and light levels that might cause harm to live while their vital organs develop. Its ability to control humidity also allows it to protect a baby's skin from losing too much water and becoming brittle. An incubator can also include equipment that can track a range of things including a baby's temperature and heart rate. So basically there are three types of incubators that are available in the market right now, open, closed and transport incubator. We have basically done our analysis on closed incubator. So this is what a functional incubator looks like. The shape and size of the incubator along with its product design focuses on maximizing the heat efficiency and minimizing the heating cost. An incubator provides an environment that can be adjusted to provide the ideal temperature as well as the perfect amount of oxygen, humidity and light. A standard incubator found in a newborn intensive care unit costs between $1,500 and $35,000 beyond the means of many hospitals in low and middle income countries. The high costs are due to excessive electricity usage in order to maintain the temperature inside the incubator. The cost being a barrier between the infant and the family, we plan to optimize it using heat transfer methods that we have learned in our second year engineering courses. So this is the front and side view of the incubator. Along the length of the incubator, we take the x-axis, the height is the y-axis and the width is along the z-axis. The modes of heat transfer taking place in the incubator are conduction, convection, radiation, evaporation and metabolic heat generation. Here we have tried to show the heat transfer in an incubator. We can see that the evaporation is happening from the baby's body, conduction and radiation are taking place through the system walls and convection is happening with the airflow in it. We have assumed a fiberglass wall incubator for our calculation and the physiological data of the baby is as shown. The incubator has been assumed to be approximately a cuboid with dimensions 74 into 50 into 40 cm. We take the ambient temperature to be 25 degrees Celsius and we have to maintain the temperature inside the incubator at 38 degrees Celsius. The energy balance of the baby can be calculated from the first equation and the heat generated of the, by the baby can be calculated from the following equation that is qm dot is equal to 0 0.0522 into m into p plus 1.64 considerable evaporation also takes place from the body of the infant and the heat flux generated by it can be calculated from this equation that is q evaporation dot is equal to mv into hfg this is the heat transfer analysis equation del K del T is equal to rho C del capital T by del small t and the equation given below it is the unsteady state equation where ux, uy and uz are the velocity components of vector u in the x, y, z direction respectively. We assume a steady state problem as we are maintaining a fixed temperature inside the incubator. The continuity and momentum equation then becomes del dot u equals equal to 0 and rho del u by del t is equal to f minus del p plus mu del square u. The buoyancy term in the equation then becomes rho naught into 1 minus beta t minus t naught. We calculate the Rayleigh number using the appropriate length scale that is the hydraulic diameter in this case. Using the Reynolds number, we see that the correct correlation to use for Nussel number is one proposed by Group and Rockin which is as shown. The approximated values for various parameters are as shown with the Rayleigh number being 9006.6 and the Nussel number being 1.399. The approximated convective heat transfer coefficient has the value 0 0.752 watt per meter square Kelvin and the various heat fluxes are approximated as shown. 
You can observe that the conductive heat is approximated to zero. But this was to find out a method to reduce the heat loss in an infant incubator to conserve energy. So our problem statement was to find out change in heat loss in an infant incubator during the incubation period of few days before and after the use of proposed solution that is double wall incubators provided that the temperature of the waste inside the incubator is to be maintained at 38 degrees celsius and the room temperature is 25 degrees celsius. Given that the reflectance of glass walls is 0.17 and transmittance is 0.07 while the total surface area of the incubator being 0.265 meter square. Using the same coordinate system as the one when defining the system, from the qualitative temperature profile, we can observe that the temperature variation in 2D. We have two temperature profiles for the two cases, single wall and double wall. We can see the modes of heat transfer like convection at the surface of air, conduction in wall and radiation in the temperature profile. Also note that when we use the double wall instead of single wall, the heat that is in the form of radiation gets partially reflected from the second wall and sent back to the incubator. This reduces the heat loss to the surrounding through radiation. For the numerical analysis, we have used ANSYS fluent. The known quantities are the temperature of the air, baby and room in which the incubator is placed. Also, the dimensions of the incubator and properties of air at a given temperature are also known. From these, we can calculate the Nusselt number and other necessary quantities. The emissivity of a baby is taken from literature to be 0.95. With this data, we will solve to get heat flux by convection and radiation for both the cases. In the second case, physical properties of glass fiber like reflectivity, transmittivity and absorptivity coefficient are given. We have used NU correlation to approximate the flow as that in a rectangular cavity. We have thus calculated the heat loss for both cases and compared them. The mesh parameters for various domains are given as shown. This is the final meshing of the baby plus incubator. Now these are the boundary conditions on air and the newborn baby. The temperature contours and temperature path lines in the incubator subject to the above boundary conditions are as shown. The swirling path lines are due to the convective heat transfer. Finally, applying the relevant equations as talked about earlier, we find the numerical values for different heat transfer modes. As we can see from the calculation, the heat loss in double walled incubators is less than that in single walled incubators. Considering just one incubator, it may not seem like much, but given the number of incubators that need to be used every day, it definitely makes an impact on energy conservation. For the first part of the model, we have used ANSYS Design Modeler and ANSYS Fluent to map the temperature and velocity path lines as well as the temperature contours of the inside of the incubator. Considering that we had assumed the inside of the incubator as a control volume, that is the entire control volume must be at the same temperature, we got the temperature contours from CFD analysis that matched our hypothesis. Although for simplification, we had also considered the incubator to be approximately rectangular for simpler calculations. We then used correct NU correlations and air properties at the required temperatures and using a MATLAB code for the calculations, we got a final answers by comparing the heat loss in both the cases. We see that our proposed double walled incubator does a better job. Double walled incubator is a well designed neonatal unit. The additional layer of wall reduces radiative heat loss which is one of the main contributors to heat loss in incubators. Due to medical reasons, convection is the only viable way to reduce or increase the temperature of infant. Hence, reducing radiative losses is the best way to conserve energy in such a case. This is achieved by the double wall design. Thank you.